Hey guys, welcome back to part two of the Z-axis bearing block. I'm setting up here to do the step for the spacer and it's going to be a full depth of cut, 0.75 inches. Uh, the width of cut here is about 80 to 100 thousandths and I'm running the mill at 600 RPMs, that is H3 gearing on the gearbox. Uh, the Precision Matthews works really well. I'm really impressed with the amount of material that I was able to remove. You can see we're getting a nice chips coming off of it. These shavings are, are really nice, especially at three quarters of an inch depth of cut. I was really very pleased with the overall performance of the Precision Matthews. As a manual mill, I, there's definitely some backlash issues that I would probably work on if I were going to use this as a manual mill. Maybe put some shims or something in there, especially if you're doing any climb cutting. Uh, depending on which direction you're working or on which side of the piece, climb cutting can be an issue with the mill wanting to kind of jump forward. But after you use it a while, you kind of get used to the way it's it's cutting and I was able to make adjustments so that it wouldn't get any kind of chatter and you can see the sides of this looks really well and I was really pleased with the overall cuts that, that were being made here All right, so now that we've finished our step all the way around, uh, this is three quarter inches deep and a quarter inch all the way around. And you just want to make sure that the spacer, uh, the four by four, fits over this. So the stock dimensions for the width on this is not exactly four inches. So I didn't trim it, I just left it. It's okay for me if it sticks out a little bit past the four inches. Um, but if you want to clean these edges up, they normally give you a little extra stock on here so that you can machine some of it. Let's see what, what it actually is. It's 4.025. So I didn't machine it, I just left it. And uh, I just machined the 4 inches this way. And again, none of those measurements are really critical. The critical measurement is your bearing pocket, and you just want to make sure that that's in the center. Okay, so you can see that when I went to make my recess for my bolt holes, I couldn't remember, but I, after I did this, I remembered that I used my 3 8 inch boring bar set to make this hole because I could get a little bit smaller diameter. Uh, so there's a mistake there now it's not really going to be seen it's not structural or critical so I'm not going to worry about it but even if you make a mistake I just wanted you to see that it's still still going to work just fine so it happens to all of us so now that we have the step done the next thing I want to do is this recess right here and this actually fits down into the hole on the top of the Z column. Uh, if you remember from our tracing it had like a, a hole in the top that this mount sat down in and so we're going to just do uh, basically the same thing and I'm just going to make that a quarter inch deep and it's about 44.35 uh, diameter and that'll be on the back side. Now, originally I thought that I would just chuck this in my G0602 with a four jaw chuck and turn this and if you have a lathe this is that is the best way to do it however if you do not have a lathe and all you have is a precision Matthews then I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's go out to the mill and we'll get this machined out. Alright, so now we're going to work on the recess portion on the bottom here. And this is quarter inch depth of cut. And we'll be taking off 80 to 100 thousandths each pass. 
we're running a four flute half inch end mill uh, 600 RPMs on the Precision Matthews and we're just going to work our way back and forth until we get to the square reference marks that I have marked here on the top uh, bottom of the bearing block here this is a slow process and it it does take quite a bit of time but it turns out the bottom turned out really smooth and really well and I was pretty pleased with the overall way the machining went for this now I'm just going to take it here to this line and then move on to the next side one good thing about doing this is each side gets a little bit smaller so you have a little bit less to do each time you move to the next side which is great overall I would say that this whole process machining this recess here was probably about 30 minutes I didn't time it but I'm just guessing it was about 30 minutes uh, we're finishing up the last side here and now I'm just going to manually move the X and the Y to kind of round off these corners uh, take your time and go slow and just go right up to the line and you should be fine make sure that that center line circle there that you drew is uh, bigger than the final dimension so you'll have some room to get some material off there just in case you slip while nubbing these corners off but other than that you should be fine okay so you can see we've uh, rounded this off we've got all this cleared out looks good uh, now we're going to come back we're going to take our end mill out and we're going to put in a boring boring bar and we're going to finish this up so let me do that now okay so what I'm going to do now is I need to redefine the center here so what I'm going to what I did was uh, I stuck my boring bar in here I turned it around backwards and what I did was I just lowered this into the hole and then adjusted this out and kind of moved it around until I got it to touch around the whole circumference and you know I just adjusted my X and Y and then when I got it to where I wanted it I just locked everything down um, I'm not a machinist so I'm sure that there is a correct way to do this um, but you might have need to have some kind of specific indicator that I don't have this turned out uh, to be the quickest easiest way for me uh, I'm going to uh, turn the boring bar around backwards and then we're going to move this adjust this out and we're going to cut with the inside by running this mill this mill happens to go uh, backwards so instead of going to the left we're just going to go to the right we're going to run it backwards and then we're just going to slowly take a little bit off and go down to our 0.25 so let's do this I might have to move the boring bar to this outside hole uh, and readjust it so let me get it set up and then we'll get started all right I'm just going slow I've got this in low gear and I'm just going to uh, slowly go around and trim this circumference up alright so I'm running this thing in reverse and I'm running it in low gear this thing has gobs of torque in low gear it's about 115 RPMs I wanted to show you real speed before I sped the video up so you could kind of just see uh, how slow it was actually moving and uh, I'm just started outside with a little bit bigger and I'm just kind of cleaning it up and then I just moving it in taking a little bit at a time and just kind of cleaning this up until uh, we get to the final dimension I left it fairly big because I wanted to make sure that I got everything uh, centered and I had plenty of material this is not a critical measurement okay we're at 44 45.7 we got to go down to 44.3 if it's a little smaller fine it just 
can't be any bigger of course because then it won't fit into the hole on the top of the z-axis but you can see how well it does pretty satisfied with the overall performance of this boring bar here running it backwards couldn't have been any happier with the way it turned out All right, that finished that up. Pretty excited about how that turned out. Worked really well. All right, so I got it all cleaned up and uh, turned out really well. It's not the easiest way to do it, but if you only have a meal, then it's the only way to do it that I know of. So, this finishes up the bearing block. Uh, now we need to do our stepper spacer. Uh, and then we'll come back and bore these holes. And then also do our stepper mount. So in the next video, we'll work on our spacer, our stepper mount, and get everything put together and finish this Z-axis mount up. Please feel free to ask questions, leave comments, or make suggestions. Thumbs up if you like the video. Thanks for watching, and most importantly, be safe.